all of the pain that we are enduring right now is because of four Nunes decisions. It's mm-hmm. it's crazy, man. Like how people just bring out narratives. What happens? These this bottle narrative or whatever. It's it's a it's crazy. <laughs> I think they about and Klopp leaving and all that. Let's. Why don't we just talk about Liverpool's uh, bottle? <laughs> Five points here at top. A bottle the Europa League three 0 against Atlanta. Bottle the FA Cup. Bottle the league title. Lost against <laughs> Crystal Palace. Drew against West Ham. It's shades of nostalgia, isn't it? A little bit. When this season started, I, yeah, 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 I want you to say that. I want you to know what's coming. Is it? Say it, say it, say it. I want you to say that. When, when this, this season, season started, started, the expectation <laughs> was... Expectation was top four at a trophy and we got four. five. Not even top four. Say that, bro. Yeah. You're not even top four. We are when top four, last right? season started... Yeah, you are top four. No, this season. Last, when, last season yeah, when last season started, I'm talking about us. When last season started, all of mm-hmm. the pundits, predictions, everything was Arsenal to finish outside of top four. Like, it was like, you started to go because you can't achieve more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can't achieve more. It feels bad, right? It's mm-hmm. it's crazy, man. Like how people just bring out narratives, what happens. These, this bottle narrative or whatever, it's it's a, it's crazy. Actually, I thought Klopp's massively overachieved with the squad. Like yeah. massively. Just because of his aura and his coaching. His aura and his coaching. And again, I'll, I'll tell you what. If you want to call it a bottle, yeah, by all means, go ahead. I'm not, I'm not going to say we didn't, right? I mean, because obviously, look at the results against West Ham. I mean, Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace at home was a dagger, man. That was the result, right? I think Everton at Everton away, we were th- I was thinking maybe we'll, we'll drop some points. But Crystal Palace at home, that was so bad. But the re... The way we were performing in January and February against kind of weaker oppositions with Luton and all of those games at that point of time, before all City and Arsenal, all of these games came up, I think that was not sustainable, to be very honest with you. I think the way we were kind of just kind of getting through and scraping through games with, with younger people and all of that. And I remember these conversations in the group itself, like Liverpool is the third best team in the league, but somehow they're still kind of leading the race and all of that. And they're they're, they're going to come back. I mean, they could, they'll concede the first goal, they're going to come back. The thing is, we fucked around and we found out. That's basically what it is. Like, and we really kind of played, you know, played that part of like conceding the first goal. We were very slow to begin with. We did that against Brighton. We did that against Sheffield and all of those things, right? So it's not sustainable, the kind of football that we're playing. And now it's kind of dawning on me that, yes, I mean, we are, the place we have is where, what we deserve, to be honest, with the football that we've been playing since the beginning of 24, to be honest. And the injuries didn't help. If Jota was there, I think at least they would have at least gotten at least a couple more points, maybe at least been in the conversation right now. Jota getting injured, Allison getting injured, it didn't help at all. And if if you think, if I think of it, and again, I'm super critical of Nunes right now, all of our misery right now is kind of is central. All of the pain that we are enduring right now is because of four Nunes decisions. The first one against Old Trafford at FA Cup, we were leading 3-2, he gives away a pass for no goddamn reason and Rashford co- goes and equalizes. The second one, he doesn't square to suppose like against at Old Trafford, it would have been 2-1, game over, done, he doesn't do that. The third one against Atlanta, first leg at Anfield, easy finish, he could have rounded the keeper, no, he doesn't do that. And the fourth one against Everton, again, one more shot, easy finish, the goal was wide open, Pickford was just squatting there he doesn't finish that and again i mean i'm, I'm just like hating on honest but the point is oh, what you really, you really keep all the bad memories close to your heart huh? i could see where the season started unraveling because if we had not gotten knocked out, knocked out of the fa cup before the break at old trafford i'm pretty sure it wouldn't have been as bad as this it's just a snowballing effect of like okay losing to fa losing a minute at old trafford that kind of spills over to the other things and that happened after international break and it's just sure. This, is, this, is, this is just sounds like nostalgia, bro, to me. I mean, same thing happened. It's just everything. I, I, the only thing, only difference here is Abhinav last season it was just us and City, so we were like in the spotlight. This yeah. year, it's Arsenal, City, and you guys. Imagine if Arsenal was fighting in the top four and it was just you and City. Mm-hmm. Then definitely this would be a collapse. Just because Arsenal is there, three teams are there, three title races become two now. So it's fine. It's okay. Mm-hmm. No one's focusing on Liverpool that much. But in isolation, if you see, if it was just Liverpool and City chasing one after the other like they have been last season and this happens, mm-hmm. that would be the narrative would be different. Yeah. Same thing happened with us last season. We drew against Liverpool. We were leading 2-0 at halftime. Mm-hmm. We fucked up against Liverpool. Then we drew against 
Saka missed a penalty, yeah. drew against West Ham, then we lost against Southampton, then we lost against Brighton, over, finished. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, things happen, dude. But no, I think I'm not. All of that aside, and mm-hmm. knowing the fact that Klopp definitely has overachieved with the squad, I don't think Darwin Nunez should be starting for a title chasing team. I don't think that a striker nope. would ever be in a title chasing team. I think he's a good striker, but he's not at the level right now. That he, he is a be. striker who can come off the bench, keep running and make against tiring defenders and make those pass he's make those you know for that Tottenham. He's perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's make that Tottenham. Yeah, remember I told I said that Darwin Nunes would probably be dropped if or sold if Zabi Alonso came into Liverpool. Mm-hmm. I think this was one of the reasons because if you look at Zabi Alonso, he needs a clutch finisher at top. Mm-hmm. Which Nunes is not, so I think I always feared for him. But do you think Mane should have been retained? I mean, I'm going back. Oh to no, no, the airship has sailed. I think, I think basically hindsight is also makes people very nostalgic in a lot of ways. But Mane was past his best. We had to move him in that season with the quadruple chasing season. Away we uh-huh. those last two games, we had to move him from left wing to right into the false nine position just so that he can recover some of his space and all of that. And he was missing chances left and right. And now we don't focus on all the chances we missed. All we are looking at is Okay, oh, Mane could have scored this goal, that goal, and all of that. But Mane was past his best, and it would have. It was a nice of all the front three, right? Firmino, Salah, and Mane at that point. But the first to leave obviously would have been Mane, and he left. There is no way going back to that point. I. It's good that we've replaced him with Luis Diaz, and Diaz had his injuries and everything, so he couldn't perform to the level of Mane. But Mane couldn't have done anything. He's done. 